Are you nervous about playing with the 2019 National Mahjong League card? Have no fear. Every player is on a learning curve when they get the new card, even the most savvy of players. In this video, I'm going to share some tips for a smooth transition. If you're new to Mahjong, or if you already know how to play and just want to build your skills, consider subscribing to my channel. That way, you won't miss anything. Without further ado, let's start the presentation. The first tip I have for you is going to involve hands-on exercises with tiles. If you have your own set, you're good to go. If you don't have a set yet, I have a recommendation for you gammonvillage.com. This is where I buy all my sets. My favorite right now is called the Metro. It's a soft case set. So go and check it out if you need to buy a set. It's for a very reasonable price right now. The first hands-on exercise that I highly recommend when you get the new card is what I call category modeling. This is where you create every hand on the card so you get your tiles out, you have your card with you, and you start with the year, the very first hand under the year. You look at that combination, you read the parentheses, and then you build the hand. Anytime there is some flexibility in the parentheses, play with the hand a little bit and see how different tiles can change the look and feel of the hand. So, Start with the first one and then just go hand by hand. Anytime there is an or, build both hands. So for example, the second hand under the year has a one suit option and a mixed suit option. Build both so that you can see what it's like to work with one suit versus mixed suits. These category modeling exercises will really help build your confidence and comfortability navigating the card initially. The next exercise I highly recommend is what I call Charleston modeling. This is where you take 14 random tiles upside down by your rack and then you create a mock Charleston. Three rows or three tiles, six rows up. That is your mock Charleston. Just random tiles for the exercise. You're going to look at your tiles and then make a decision which category to play. You're going to take three tiles that you don't want and put them in front of your rack and then bring an incoming pass from the mock Charleston into your hand and see how your hand changes with each pass. At the end of the Charleston, when you do your optional cross, put in one, two, or three, take out from the mixed up tiles there that you've passed and bring those back into your hand so that you have 14 tiles again. And then note the results and do it again and just practice this Charleston modeling until you're comfortable making decisions with the new card. The next exercise I call Charleston chain reaction because when you go through the Charleston, every decision that you make can create a chain reaction. And it is really interesting to see how those decisions can have such different results in the end. So. You set up just like Charleston modeling, but this time you're going to use your phone or a camera and you're going to photograph along the way so you can recreate it and take a different approach and compare results. All that is explained right here. Basically, you take a photo of your hand, you pass, bring in an incoming pass, take a photo, and then you make decisions. And every time you bring an incoming pass, you take a photo so that you can recreate the Charleston and your beginning hand. And then let's say the first time you play consecutive run and while you're going through the Charleston, you might see that there was some opportunity for odds. So then you're going to back it up, recreate the experience with the drawn hand and the mock Charleston exactly as they were the first time around. And then you're going to play the odds approach and compare results. It's a lot of fun and it's very interesting. There's a lot to learn from doing this exercise. 
The next exercise that I highly recommend is Charleston Force. This is also set up like Charleston modeling. Basically, you're going to create a strip for every category on the card, and you're going to mix them up and pick three random strips, and you're going to force hands in those categories only. So you're going to do the Charleston three times, and each time you're going to force a hand from one of the strips. Once you force a hand, whether you make it or not, you'll remove that strip and then go again and then force a hand in one of the two remaining strips until there's one left and you have to force a hand in that one category. It's a lot of fun and it really trains you to navigate the whole card. Play categories that you normally might not play. The next exercise that I recommend is what I call Charleston Sprints. This is where you set up like the Charleston and you're gonna do three Charleston's, Charleston exercises, I call them sprints, because you're gonna go fast. The goal of the exercise is to train yourself to make fast decisions, so you're gonna sprint. Laps one, three, and five are going to be the sprints, and then two and four will be set up. So you're gonna need your smartphone stopwatch app or a stopwatch in order to do the exercise and track your time. If you are a beginner, give yourself four minutes to make decisions through a Charleston. If you are an intermediate player, give yourself three minutes, and if you're advanced, two minutes. And then if you want to improve, push yourself to the lower thresholds until you're at that two minute mark. And the idea is to get an average of whatever threshold you set. And the whole purpose here is to push yourself to make quick decisions. One of the things that is great about this exercise is it desensitizes you from the anxiety of making a mistake because you can recover. All of these exercises are focused on the Charleston. The Charleston is half the game. I don't know if you've ever watched the time, but typically it's about half the game. After the Charleston is picking and discarding. So the Charleston is where you are working to improve your starting position going into the pick and discard phase of the game. So it's critical to make good decisions and timely decisions and that's where all these exercises come into play. There's one other exercise that I forgot to mention and that is solitaire. That is where you play four hands at one time. On my YouTube channel I have examples of all these exercises so you can see how they're set up and the purpose of each one, because each one focuses on a different skill set. These exercises are all from my lessons online and they use a mock card. That's why you see the title, American Mahjong Skill Builder, and then in parentheses, mock card. It's timeless, so you'll be able to follow along just like you would with a new card. It might take a little while to get used to, but it is just like an American Mahjong card, but it will be timeless. So if you want to see how all these skill builders work, watch these videos. There's a link at the bottom of the screen. Just type that in so that you can easily find it on my YouTube channel. You could always go to YouTube and type Mahjong Central or Michelle Frizzell and find me. There's another playlist that I want to share with you, especially if you're a beginner or intermediate player. This playlist is on strategy. Here I cover style, tile efficiency, strategy by wall, and joker bait. There's the link at the bottom. I encourage you to check it out because it will improve your game pretty quickly if you apply some of these methods to the way you play. The other tip that I wanna give you is to play online and that's where the sprints are gonna come in because when you play online, you've gotta play fast. There's a timer, so you have to make decisions between five and eight seconds during the Charleston and also picking and discarding. So before you play online, do those sprints until you're at that two minute mark and then play, you'll be able to play online very comfortably. And it's a lot of fun. I think Mahjong Time is the very best place to play. I'm an affiliate there, so I do get commissions and those commissions help 
support my channel, my YouTube channel. So if you're interested in trying it out, I do have 30 day VIP codes that I can send you. Just look for my email below the video, send me an email and I'll send you a 30 day VIP code so you can try it out. The other thing that you can do to ramp up your experience using the National Mahjong League card is to play Siamese Mahjong. This is where you play two hands at one time against one opponent. That's basically concentrated effort because you're playing two hands at one time, double duty. It's very challenging and a lot of fun. So if you want to try it out, you could go to SiamesMahjong.com and Mahjong Time programs that platform. So your account at Mahjong Time works with Siamese Mahjong and vice versa. It usually takes them a week or two to reprogram for the new card, so be patient as they ramp up their own programming for the new card. The final tip that I have for you is to play live often. When you play live, don't pick a hand, pick a category. You could even be in multiple categories. Identify your multiples and gather tiles that support those multiples. Don't pick a hand till you run out of discards. When you run out of discards, that's when you pick a hand. Or you start whittling down from maybe two categories or two hands down to one. All the videos that I shared with you, the skill builders and the strategy, I talk a lot about it in all those videos. And then the National Mahjong League videos that I publish on Mondays, I talk about all these strategies in those videos as well on an ongoing basis throughout the year. So learn about building around multiples. American Mahjong is a game of multiples. So if you leverage them, you'll win more times than not. Although it's not about winning and losing, it's about learning. So have that focus and you won't be discouraged when you lose. If you're looking for groups to play with, check the JCC. Also, check Facebook and Meetup. There are groups all around the nation who play Mahjong. Each one of these may have a group that you could join in your area. The last thing that I wanna share with you is top three mistakes people make when playing with a new card. Number one, passing risky tiles in the Charleston. Every year, Risky tiles are flowers, dragons, pairs, of course, like numbers, and typically the year tiles. This year it's ones and nines. But in addition, fives are prevalent on the card this year. So those are all going to be risky tiles. Hold them, if you can, or pass them individually. You could always hold them and then discard them in the pick and discard phase of the game if you don't need them. Passing risky tiles is the top one of the top mistakes that I see being made when playing with a new card. The second mistake that I see people make is claiming a discard for an exposure when they're playing a concealed hand. Always pause a beat, double check to see if there's an X or a C by the hand you're playing before you claim a discard to make an exposure or before you claim a tile or even self-pick and declare Mahjong. Number three, playing a hand from last year. Before you claim a discard to make an exposure or before you declare Mahjong, always check the block convention of the hand that you're playing to make sure that your hand is copacetic. There is a lot of variety on this card when it comes to the block conventions. I also have some resources for you. This will help you ramp up as a player too. There's a great Facebook group called Mahjong That's It. It's the largest Facebook group for Mahjong enthusiasts. The next Facebook group is the Siamese Mahjong Guild if you decide to learn how to play Siamese Mahjong. And then I have a Facebook group. I make a lot of announcements about my YouTube channel here and I do go live on Facebook at times also. 
There's a lot of Q&A on all of these websites. So if you ever have a question about playing the game, these are some great resources for you. I invite you also to subscribe to my channel. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, click subscribe, then click that little gray bell. That way you'll get notification for when I post new videos and you won't miss an opportunity to learn a new strategy or pick up an insight to the game that could give you an advantage at the table. Between now and the next video, may all your picks be keepers.